How did you go from being involved in that, that gangster mindset to getting into business? I will fight too for now to get them there. It's having that, um, you know, having that ambition. And of course, not everything don't always go your way. You have your ups and downs, like you get beat in a fight, you're gonna come back or not, and, and, and so on. One of your greatest tests for you was someone attempting to take your life. Welcome to another episode of the Dr. Prince Show. And for you, our special guests, we have an absolute legend of a guest in none other but Frank Warren, my guy. <laughs> well, I'm excited, you know, bro. Seriously, like, I was, like, I was in bed, like, just thinking, we're going to sit down and have a chat with Frank. And I thought about the journey that I've been on when I first met you yeah. and everything. And I thought, this is amazing, man, just being able to sit down with Frank and get to this stage in our lives. Because I think there's, you know, you've been through some, some serious stuff in your life. I've been through a lot in mine. And uh, I actually feel that there's, the synergy is we're really both fighters. That's, the, that's where saying? we come from, isn't it? That's we're, the sport. We're we, were, we were both in. You, you in the ring. And yeah. A tremendous fighter. Yeah. Tremendous fighter. Great talent. And uh, as you say, we've had, been on our various journeys, but your journey's mm. been extremely tough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I just want to let people know from the off that um, even when I asked you about being involved with the charity and um, just kind of as an ambassador to kind of spread the message, help us raise funds, just your willingness to be involved. You know, I want to be able to publicly thank you because um, along the journey, a lot of people say stuff and say, yeah, they'll do this and they'll do that. But you, you came up trumps, Frank, you know? Well, it's, listen, I, first of all, I know you. Yeah. You know, you you although we work together as professionally, you're a friend and that's what, you yeah. don't think you, you know you, you can you do what you can to help try and put something back. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, from what you and your family went through was you know beyond com comprehension. So, yeah, bro. I you know, you. we're there for you. Yeah, but I just want to, on behalf of my family, appreciate everybody on the team, I just want to let you know we appreciate you, bro. Coming into you know one of your shows and seeing the KPF, you know, logos everywhere, that was real nice. Um, in the ring, that was really nice. We got other plans to, to put on a, a show. I know COVID yeah. kind of messed it up. Absolutely. And sport yeah. it, or we would have raised some, some good money already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, that's going to be coming in the future. Um, but I just want to say thank you, Bar, for me and my family, you know, for who you are, bro, and what you're about. Thank you. But what do you think of all of this, this knife crime stuff going on, bro? Why, no, why I, did you feel that I want to help? Because I, I, I was born in Islington. Uh, which, you know, it's a, it a tough area now, but it was a tough area back then. It was a bit more impoverished. And uh, it was before it got gentrified and yeah. everyone there. Mm -hmm. And I lived, on, I lived in a council estate. Tough, tough estate I lived on. Mm. And, you know, I see, I see it. I grew up with it. I mean, you know, like we all do, if you come from that sort of a background, yeah. that's, that sort of environment, I should say, you know, you have to make, you make sometimes unconscious decisions. Yeah. It's, it's just you... You drift into that way of life, and yeah, I you know, I ran with ran with a with you know the gang we was called you know where where we were mm -hmm. it was the, the uh, angel because that's where we came from, and then you had the, the, the <laughs> what hybrid was it called, of Toriano. Was it called mob. Angel? Yeah, that's what, you know, <laughs> well from Angel isn't it? And then you had the, the hybrid mob, you had that's the Torianos, you yeah. had Summers Town. So nothing ain't changed really, yeah, has it? It's, it's all territorial, isn't yeah. it? Because that's, that's what we are at the end, of it. especially yeah. in that environment. It's, it's quite yeah. a territorial thing, and. But, you know, I, I I had a few friends shot, yeah, uh, in in uh, stabbed. I've been stabbed myself. I got mm -hmm. stabbed in the back in a fight. You know, I've had it. I've got, I mean, I've still got the scars on my hand wow. where I've got the where a fellow with the knife. With the knife. It, you know, wow. so I know what it is. It's mm -hmm. a, it's and it, and the thing is, it's and that sounds a terrible. Way, I don't know if I'm going to phrase this correctly. Yeah, it's a thing that can just happen. Out of nothing, mm. out of nothing, a spontaneous thing. It's a, you know, it's a macho thing. And what what I think is more dangerous now is that for obvious is, is that it's it's young. They're younger. Yeah, they're doing this at a much younger age. Mm -hmm. These kids, mm -hmm. and 
and for them, it's uh, it is a way of life, and it's a way of tr from you know from their perspective, it's uh, you know it's it's being it's being a man, it's being a guy, it's being mm -hmm. one of the fellas because mm -hmm. they don't know any different. Do you think it's more dangerous where your mind's not developed yet? You know, your cognitive behaviour's not developed yet to that certain level and you're 12, 13, 14. Yeah, you're, you're mimicking people. You probably, you know, the local tough guy who's a few yeah. years older than you, you know, everyone, you know, it's like you're the guy there, yeah, you're the it. fella. Up there. He's, yeah. he's the, well, watch him, he's a bit powerful, he's strong and whatever. They, they look up to him. Mm. There's some for some of them, and you know, that guy's a hero. So... They will aspire to do what he, you know what he does, and it's mm. and it's it's very easy to do this. Very easy to get, get you know, they get them, don't they? It's not yeah. hard to get them. Yeah. I mean, we've done a couple of things. I've done I've done a show up in Manchester where we, did, we where we did it. We gave people tickets for knives. It was a knife amnesty. I've done a, okay, a, yeah, a gun that. one. We've done done it with guns. Yeah, and you just try to get people attention, and, and you know from from where you know from where your background is, my mm. background, there is another way. Yeah. That isn't the only way. Mm -hmm. And it's not because people, you know, because you think it's the, you know, you're a tough guy and you'd be tough guys in other, you'd be a tough guy in a different way. Yes. Yeah, and, and I think um, there is another path for you to, you know, for people to go down, but it's how you're going to, you've got to show them where that path mm -hmm. is. You've got to show them the way. Someone's got to demonstrate it. And unfortunately, politicians, and some of them may, do mean well, but they're not going to connect with politicians. Oh, they may you. not even connect with me now because I'm yeah. an old geezer who they wouldn't even think that, yeah. I, you know, where I come yeah. from. You know, yeah. obviously you've got you, you're a younger yeah. man, but it's, it's connection. And, mm -hmm. and, it's, and when you connect with them, you've got, you know, you've got to get that message across. There mm -hmm. are, are they? But you've got to give them opportunities. You've got to give them places to go to. Yeah. You know, drugs is the major problem, obviously, the drug. Mm -hmm. It all, it all emanates down to that. How, how, did, how, did, how did you, because I've got my own understanding of when I had that kind of mindset, how I shifted into changing that. But I don't know yours. Share with me. How did you go from kind of like being involved in that, that gangster mindset to getting into business? Where did that shift come from? Well, it was a bit double, really. I had, I had nightclubs and pubs. Okay. So when I was young, when I was yeah. about, I was about 22, 23, I had nightclubs and pubs. So my, my, my you know, my family in Islington were, were you know, were quite a, you know, well known, well known family. Yeah. And you know they were it, it was quite a macho environment again because there was you know my uncles, there was there was my dad and his three brothers, and they were quite, you know, well respected mm -hmm. and you know, saying like that. Um, but it's a macho sort of environment. You try to match up, to, you know, you try to match up to that. Fortunately, I had one uncle who, re who used to really, you know, sort of slap my wrist a bit, and mm. you know, hold up. My mum and dad sp had split up, yeah. So there wasn't a big thing like when my dad was there. They weren't, they weren't at home. So if you're, at, you know, if you're at, you're at home with your mum, and she's got a couple of, you know, we had, a, you know, I said my my, um, my, my uh, two brothers and sisters. It, yeah. it was it was tough on her. That's right. So. I spent more, my uncle spent, was really the guy that I, you know, he sort of, I sort of, um, was a bit of a mentor to me. Yeah. But I, um, I made a conscious decision to, to, to bail out of all of it because um, the people who, again, I, I hung around with a lot of people who were older than me. I was like mm. the kid out of all of them. Okay. And, you know, they were, a bit, as we use the term, a bit lively. And um, a couple of them just went, a couple of them wound up becoming, uh, in those days, like uh, informers and so forth. Mm. So I thought, like, who needs this crap? You know, I don't, hey. it was just, it was just a, a penny dropping moment for me to get out of it. And I just changed my whole life. What and if I hadn't you... have done that, I'd have, prob I'd have done, been, you know, who knows yeah. what that. That's it. So did you think to yourself, I want to be a businessman? What did you, what did you think? What was the aim? I didn't have a aim or a plan. It just happened. Things just happened. I, I'd see, right, I want to do that. A nightclub, yeah, that's going to get a you know, And I just did it. Okay. Um, I, 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 I sort of get set my mind on something. I put my mm. blinkers on and I, I'll do what I've got to do to get there. Hey. Or try to get there, you yeah. know. And I did that, you know, when I built London Arena. When yeah. everyone said you can't build, you know, you're not yeah. going to, it's not going to happen. Yeah, you know, we've got so 12,500 seat arena, arena, the TV company that we did for the uh, Box Nation. Yeah. All, but that was really goes back again to when I was 
I think, younger, where I would never back down from anyone. Mm. You know what I mean? I always, I, you know, I, I was never sort of fearful of anybody. Yeah. Not stupid fear, but I was yeah. never. So, I, and then, and you know, once you went younger, like we like I said at the start, is how would you sort out an argument? You know, you sort it out, didn't you? Sort you know, it out. You know, whatever that's it was, it. that's what that, that's how it was. Yeah. And obviously, you know, I, I sort of. I, I sort of used the courts over the years for obvious, for obvious reasons. You can't go around and bash somebody over the other lump of wood. Yeah. You know, you, you you do that, and you and you move on, and grow. And uh, you know, and I've tried, I've tried to instill, you know, with, with my youngsters that they they have a, you know, that that the education how important it was because mm. I was I went to a grammar school. I passed me eleven plus, oh, so nice. I went to a grammar school when I was a kid. But I never I never took any um, advantage of it. At okay, all. I didn't take any of that. So was it was it that entrepreneurialness just in you, like yeah. I want to succeed, and whatever I place in my head to do, I can achieve that. Yeah, I think that's about, that's it. And I, and I and I wanted if I wanted as I say I, I was quite ambitious, and I and I obviously like everybody. I liked. I like earning money, I like getting money, or getting mm -hmm. it, earning it, yeah. you know, getting the money. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. That's it. Because what you do, you you know, again, when you're young, you want, when you're a young, like a young fella, you want nice clothes, you want to buy a car, That's right. you know, and, and all those That's things. Right. Same as everybody. I was yeah. no different. And and when I was a kid in the sixties, early seventies, I mean, it was a great time. It was a brilliant time yeah. to be around the whole. Everything was changing in a massively it different was, way. Was it? Sixties, seventies. Yeah, a big, a big, big change in, mm. in, you know, it was like they, they, you know, we were born, obviously, the, the, the war, the war ended seven years before I was born, and and growing up in London then, it was just bomb sites everywhere, wow. where the, where the, where the London had been bombed. That's it. Bottom of Mine Road was so bomb ruins. Smashed up. It was yeah, it was all bomb ruins everywhere. You see all the council estates and everything. They're the result of some building on the bomb ruins. Wow. But it, but they obviously didn't have the money to in nine you know That's just it. after the war to start Did building. It, so you. it took a took a while and there was a lot of that building going on in the sixties seventies. Wow man. A lot of a lot of poor people, but there was a, there was work around. Okay. You know, or people living on something you know. Yeah. You weren't living on your witch. Yeah. You was doing. Doing whatever he was doing, but there, it was um, it was it was a uh, like for me as a youngster, I loved it. I mean, I, I had the best best time. Music mm. was brilliant. I loved music, you know. I mean, I've always been a complete music nut, and you know, the, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, well, absolute blues, you know, Stax Motown, nice. uh, Blue Beat, Scar. That nice. was what I. <laughs> yeah, I grew up listening to Sky in the yard with my dad. Yeah, I, so all, I mean, I, you know, loved all that scatter lights. In fact, I did you say I actually like going? Is that what what the connection was with the nightclub as well? Just yeah, you the music, loving the I mean, music, all the things you were passionate about, all in one. Yeah. I mean, you know, growing up there was radio. It was the home service. The, rate, the light radio before this is before Radio One and Radio Two. Yeah. That nineteen, I don't know what it was, sixty-seven, whenever it was, sixty-eight. Yeah. The rate, uh, Radio One, but Radio One was pop music. It was you didn't hear no. Yeah. I mean, you got a bit of you got a bit of Motown on there, yeah, but yeah. you didn't hear. But you didn't really you hear, hear the music that really yeah, you know, get, get to your soul. You, you know what I mean? Okay. So you didn't get any of that. And I mean, we used to go to specialist record shops because all the imports had come in. So you nice. go down there was, and listen to it. I used to love it. I had a, I had a massive, massive record collection. Hey, it was awesome, right. man. Yeah. I didn't know because yeah, my yeah. dad had one of them. He yeah. loved it. He, it was his pride and joy. With the old tro all the Trojan, I've got all, every, I have nearly every Trojan re 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 wow. original 45 that come out, yeah. All of those awesome stuff. Yeah, I, 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 but I love it. I think I think yeah. you know, I love the I love the you know the music, the black culture of music. I thought was just Excellent. the best. And, and I love jazz. Yeah. You know, so I like John Coltrane or anything, the Miles Davis, oh, all that. <laughs> Billy Holiday. <laughs> was was you a dance man or you just used to just love listening? Um, Did you, you're a little, night club uh, in the middle know, of the bit, dance floor. No, a little bit more reserved. At the end of the night, you know, see a young lady who you want to, you know, look at eye on her. Yeah. She's a dance darling, let me go. <laughs> but as you get older, no, and then as you get older, look, don't it? But um, yeah, I, I was into it. I promoted music. I promoted Frank Sinatra, you know. So we could we safely music. say at one point in your life you was a gallus and a dance hall king? 
You used to go to the, used to go to the um, all the clubs in the West. You know, the clubs we used yeah. to go to in those days, you know, all the old clubs. Yeah, it's yeah, it's good fun. Good fun. The business side of you, you know, as we hear from you from early on, you had this mindset to just be able to make money, develop something. You had an idea, you went for it. I think that's very powerful because young people always find excuses and ways where they can't do something. You seem to be the kind of person that, that always looked for how you could make something happen. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I, I mean when I got into boxing, I was told, you won't, you, you won't last, you won't be able to do this and so forth. And that was a bit like, well, I'll, if I can't, it won't be for the want of trying and, I'll, mm. and I will try and I'll double try. So and, what was the toughest thing in your business journey that you found difficult to, you know, get over or learn or develop in? I think my, my toughest thing was trust. Hey. I had a couple of people who I thought who came on board and I thought would be basically the back, back, back office mm. end of the job. They'd yeah. look after the accounts and that. Yeah. And I got let down badly on that. That, but that's that's you know that was my my fault because I should have kept more of an eye on it. I'm good at going out and generating the business and bringing oh, yeah, it in, yeah. and then you expect you know then I've got the back you know say the back staff to um, mm. look after it. And I I made a couple of back, couple of unwise decisions. Other than that, people I've got have had around me you know the likes of you know Emma and Andy yeah. and I could go through all of them. Yeah. They've been with me for you know I've seen that long long time, and they've been brilliant and been very supportive and been there yes. in. Good and bad and times. Bad times. You know, like, if you don't have bad times, you don't appreciate the good times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so, it, you know, you got you know, with biz business, you you got to go. I think go with your gut instincts, and make sure that you know you keep your eye right on the ball, mm. especially when you're younger. Because you know, you, know, you have. I certainly had more of a, you know, oh, it, oh, it should be. Oh no, that's being dealt with. And it was a pure trust thing, and, and, and I misplaced my trust. And so I'm hearing that to build a good business, you need to have a good team. Correct. Because no man's an island. You ain't going to do no. this on your own. No, no, no. You know, for me, I'm developing Prince Productions, and I know that the people that I'm working with um, are the same people that I've known and worked with yeah. for a and, while. And they're so your team, and they've got, your, and and they got your best interest, and you've got their best there interest. You go. Yeah. There you go. But, yeah. but throughout your journey as a... In, in your character, where do you think that you've changed? How did business change you as a person? I think the way I, I behave, whereas probably when I was, if I'd been really young and some of the things happened, I'd probably have had punched someone on the nose, whereas you can't right. do that, can you? Got you, know? you. Because it's, yeah. th that, that's age, and, and mm. that's being sort of basic about it. But I think the main thing is trying to get, um, if you're doing a deal with somebody, you know, you've you've got your deck, you've got your hand. I've got my hand, yeah. and and sometimes you get people who want everything. They want to take even the crumbs off the table. Mm. You should always make sure that when you're doing something, that both of you can, or who's ever involved, that you're going to get something mm. from it. Because mm. if you don't, and you want you want to take, I think at the end of the day, it, the, that business would just fizzle out. Of you. Hey. And it was just like you've got got to make it go round. Yeah, make yeah. it make sure that everybody can do well out. There you go. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of good at, uh, as I say, if I'll get something, if I'm, I want to get something going or I'm behind a fighter, I mm. will fight two from now to get them there, mm. get them to where, get them to the position where they can get into the, when they get into the ring, I've done everything I can to ensure that it's a level playing field yeah. and I feel they've got a chance, mm. That's, which is all you can do. So how do you think boxing, the business of boxing has changed because you've been in this for a hot minute, bro. Well, when I first got into it, it was run by a group called The Cartel. Mm -hmm. There was only, um, as you, know, you mentioned the documentary, it's, called, yeah. it's, it's well explained in there. But That's uh, right. But it's, um, it was, there was only two, only really two venues in London. It's mm -hmm. before there was more, you know, obviously more venues like the O2 yeah. and so forth were built. That was the Albert Hall and Wembley. That's and they right. had them tied up. 
Yeah. So I had to be creative and find somewhere to put a show on. And those are the big ones. That's the, yeah, the, yeah. the most so common I, one was York Hall, was not, Yeah, so I couldn't get in York Hall either. Yeah, because They was... had York Hall. Wow. So they had them all tied up. You couldn't get them. Well, all right, that's yeah. what it is. That's yeah. what you're going into. Yeah. So I had to be think about what I was doing, and I wound up um, uh, doing the shows in circus tents, in, in uh, <laughs> you know, dope. anywhere. Gun, that's heavy. You know, uh, I remember it was the Bloomsbury Crest Hotel. You could get about, I don't know, 14, 1,500 people in there. I don't know, yeah. It ain't got quite crammed for, for shows, but yeah. I had to get, get it going. And more importantly, I had to get TV. And in those days, again, there was only BBC and, BBC so and ITV. Not. But ITV didn't show any boxing. They only showed overseas boxing, nothing domestically. Yeah, see. The BBC were... What's that there. about, Frank? Like, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you promote the sport that's so good because in your country. The border control back then as well were quite in league with, with you know, they were quite cosy with the cartel, Mickey yeah. Duff Jarvis yeah. just there. Yeah, I remember and, those yeah, days. So they were quite cosy. And so they think, and if, and if it's, you've got a situation, you haven't got to make no drastic decisions because it just rolls on every day. And then uh-huh. suddenly in comes this fella who thinks he knows it all, but I didn't know it all, but comes into it and... Uh, you know, starts asking questions and has a bit of ambition and pushing it and mm-hmm. uh, and and it create, you know it created a bit few problems for him because yeah. I weren't going away and Lee mm. and I and I thought the only way I'm going to do this I've got to challenge th- what they're doing legally. I hear so I got I got a really good lawyer on board. Excellent. And we you know and where that tenacity not, not, come from, bro? That because you know what you're going up against. You was going up against a system that had worked for them for years. Yeah. And like the reason why I'm saying this is because I know there's people in business listening, there's loads of different and young people listening. So they gotta understand what they're gonna come up against whenever they wanna try and achieve something. So where that tenacity come from to like I ain't I, I gonna let you like that are invo- I think they're inborn with you. They're inborn in you. You're a fighter. Hey. You got tenacity. You know, you did you didn't turn professional just to have some, a couple of four-rounders and mm. six-rounders, did you? You no, turned man. professional because you yeah. had it in your head what you wanted that's to do right. and you believed in yourself. That's right. And, and, that, okay. and I think, you know, boxers are like that, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Like, they and, I mean, it's the, it's the ultimate sport. Bar none, ultimate sport. Mm. One-on-one, you know, yeah. brain power. Brain power. They all think like, you know, you're yeah. this and the yeah. no. it's, brain, it's power brain power and power, skills bro. and so forth. Yeah. But it's having that, amb- you know, having that ambition. And of course, not, Everything don't always go your way. You have your ups and downs. Like that's you get right. beat in a fight, you're going to come back. You and have not, to. And, and, that's right. So Hence why I said that you're a fighter as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm not bad. <laughs> I'm not going into that detail with that one. But anyway, but that's what it is. You know. uh, listen, you've been involved in some absolutely awesome uh, shows. You uh, were the head poncho. Um, Everyone has their time where they are just the lesser gravy train. Your best days where you had um, all the, the TV, or all the fighters were. What was that like coming from, coming from those tent shows? You know, it what's was, that uh, like, man? It was, it was really, it was, it was good. What I enjoyed about it was my... If I had a belief in somebody, and mm. you know, and I, I sort of worked with them and got behind, them, was seeing that happen. That uh, you know, oh, we all got our ego. I was right yeah. about him. See, I told you. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah. Like off the top, man, I can remember Joe Kawasaki. Yeah. At one stage, I, I got a letter. I had arguments. I had a letter from Vic Wakelin, who was the head of sport at, mm. at Sky. Um, my, uh, uh, fellow at ITV as well. His name would come to me in a minute. Both of both of them said they didn't want Joe Kawasaki. Yeah. yeah, they said he was born. Joe Kawasaki, after he beat, if you remember, he fought um, uh, the guy from, who came over from the States, Jeff Lacey. Yeah. He then became a 10-year overnight sensation. Who became a 10-year? Joe, Joe. No, oh, uh, no, pr- no pr- shadow of a doubt. Prior to that. But prior to that. I'm telling you, I've got the letters still to this day. Yeah, I, so if I did, if I did a package, I say right, you got this, you know, a Naz, you have, you know, Nigel Benn, this yeah. one, and you got to take him. I hear you. 
I could see from an amateur yeah, he was that a, Joe had something. He, he, he did. He had something. He was. I mean, there were times where he pulled out of a lot of fights, but anyway, that happened. But yeah. you know, yeah, well, proof in the pudding. What he though. did, you know, where he was. I mean, yeah. he, he, he done brilliantly. But yeah, it's uh, it was um, it was. It, you know, as I say, to go and fight, you know, go and you know, be with talent, and make you bring them through like that. Yeah, it's great. You know, I've been, I've been blessed. I've been very, very lucky. I've been blessed. I've worked hard, but you got to have a bit of luck. And, yeah. and the harder you work, the luckier you get. You know, so you've got to just keep bashing away. So your thing was just about outcomes. Like I got great pleasure from seeing the fighters get to where they wanted to get to, and I played a big part in making that happen. And and. and some of them made some seriously good money, and yeah. quite rightly so. So that that was good. Obviously, I, I made money of it because no I'm a doubt. professional, and that's what I do. Yeah. But you know, they they made some good money and set their, yeah. themselves and their families up for life. Nice. Um, and it's um, let's get it right. How many boxers actually crack it? You know, it, it, it's it's a it, tough game. When it's the pro. toughest game. You know, you're getting hit. That's the end of it, isn't it? That's what's happening. Mm. You play football, you head a ball, you kick a ball. You play rugby, right? You have your tackles and that, mm. but no one's trying to knock you out. Do you know, it's, it's weird. You know, it's a good question to ask somebody in your position because you're in a position where you could have a vision to try and change how boxing is because it's got this very much, uh, you know, make money, we're the promoters, we'll make the money, the fighters... You know, they just do as they're told, go and do their thing, and they fight. Um, did you have in your head that you want to change some of that well, sort of... Well, there was the Hollywood image, you know, that was crooked, that yeah. people were taking dives. Do you know yeah. anyone ever took a dive? Yeah, I, I don't. don't know and especially in the age of tabloid journalism, yeah. they'd be selling the story if they'd have done yeah. that, wouldn't they? Yeah, it yeah never exactly. Happened. Um in the States, the States was much different than the UK. What happened in the UK with the cartels, they controlled it. And yeah. the purses were quite, you know, they, they were what they were. No one was earning any huge money. Yeah. And I, I like to think that changed when I got, in, got involved because mm. we, dro we drove the market up. Guys were getting good money. We, I yeah. started getting, because it was getting good ratings, we That's started right. getting, get, you know, get, obviously getting bigger rights fees gate monies and so yep, forth. Yep. And that helped to popularise the sport. The sport become very popular. That's it. Big viewing figures. Yep. And I think... Um, yeah, I, you played I, a massive part in changing boxing. Yeah, I, 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 I like to think I did my bit. But yeah, you did. And, and, it, and from boxing's perspective, I, I, I think that's changed now how people look at it. Mm. You know, you, you, it, was always, it was always like the, um, the, the, the sort of problem sport. Nobody mm. really gave a monkeys about mm. it. It yeah. was like, if we want to see it, but we don't really want to touch it. Mm. There's something wrong with it. I hear you. Because of the way it was run compared to other governing bodies. Yeah. It could protect the athlete, look after him. But we didn't have no structures like that in boxing. No. It was no. raw. It, it was raw. Um, that, you know, boxing border mm. control was there doing mm. a bit. The medical aspect had to be really tightened up. Mm. I mean, what happened with Michael Watson was dreadful. You know, when you think what happened with Michael and the board were, the board then were in a legal action with him. Mm. They could have, that could have been, so, I, mean, I never promoted Michael. I never, I was yeah. never involved in promoting yeah. him. But I was watching that and he won the case and he was awarded money. Yeah. And then the board were going to go bust. Totally. And I'm like, what is going on here? One, you know, and I actually, yeah. um, you know Al Hamilton. That's it. So yeah. I called Al. Yeah. I said, let's. Get a meet. I think yeah. we got. Let's try and sort to help sort this out. We did. Got everyone around the table. Wow. And uh, that's a big move, Frank. And the board of control. I said to the board, "How much money have you spent on this case?" Mm -hmm. I'm a licensed holder. I mean, it's hard to know. Yeah. It spent well over. I think it's you know 1.1, 1.2 million that's quid. Ridiculous money. Yeah. Why don't you give him that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You give it to lawyers. Yeah. And now you're going to go skin. You're going to go bust. Wow. So we, uh, you know, I had to do the settlement, and they was yeah. money apart. I, I put some in to make it happen. Yeah. And I, um, and we run a benefit night yeah. for him, which I underwrote. I said, yeah. look, this is how much you got to pay Michael. So yeah. like, you're going to pay him this amount, which is nowhere near his, the only yeah. he's got. I'll put, I'll guarantee, I'll raise this, and we're still short, and I'll put a bit in as well. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a guarantee. And and we we did it for him, and it settled the case. 
and it, and and I thought that I thought you know it was really bad for the but bad for Michael most importantly because he was mm. the guy affected about this. He's in a wheelchair. His life's that's right changed completely to yeah, what it why was. Why wouldn't you want to help? help? Why wouldn't we want that? And it's a bad advert and all the mm. stuff that was going down. It's like no one cares. Yeah. And it become a legal situation rather than a human Shit, situation. Thank you, Frank. And at the end of the day, we you know we got it done. Then we had a couple of tragedies in the ring, and then it was, um, you know, the, the Adrian Whiteson, who uh, mm -hmm. was the chief medical officer of the board, mm -hmm. really, really good guy. Yeah. He also founded the Teenage Cancer Trust charity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, he said, we need to do something here. So we spoke to some neurosurgeons. I, I got involved with you know, Peter Hamlin yeah. and John Sutcliffe, a few other eminent neurosurgeons who were actually an opera who had operated on boxers mm. and I would I thought they'd be very anti-boxing but they were quite supportive nice. very supportive of, of the sport and it was well what could, what can we do to safeguard the sport what can we do mm. more so if you remember the weigh-ins were brought forward various other things but most most importantly they decided to do away with a skull x-rays which was an x obviously an x-ray of your skull yeah. every annually well, I don't know what that was ever about that, and replace it with an MRI scan, but yeah. they, they, no one was going to pay it. So, you know, I, I, I felt, for me personally, and I thought a lot of other people in the sport should step up and make sure you pay for it. Pay for it. We paid for it. every boxer to get his MRI scan. Brilliant. Because from there, you've now got the first MRI scan, yeah. and you now can monitor the guy's career. That's right. And make sure every time. He has a scan yeah. annually, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. that you can see if there's any That's right. change Anything or whatever. And, yeah. and, and protect. So that had to happen. We had to have that library of MRIs to start. And, now it's in. and you got and, and keep evolving and moving and, mm. and helping. That's it's a, a dangerous help. sport, yeah. but all you can do is to try and make the environment as safe as possible. Mm. And that's what I, I was quite yeah. conscious of and doing. That was brilliant, bro. Trust me, because I remember getting my MRI scans and I remember they found a heart murmur with me one yeah. time and I couldn't have yeah. the fight that was coming up. We had to get that all sorted. Uh, and how expensive it is. Exactly. Because we're not going to some Joe Blogs. Well, some place, guy got four, like four rounder or six rounder. You know, yeah. It's a lump of money for Yeah, it. some yeah, Street. Yeah. So I've got to big you up on that one, Frank. It's a nice <laughs> move. But you know what? You know, I just love being real with you, yeah, on this show. So, how boxing was seen for young black guys coming up, for us, it was like, I remember me being very distrustful yeah. and just like, well, you got to watch these guys, yeah, I remember you know, that. promoters, managers, the, the boxing border control, all of that. Because for us, like, especially the boxing border control, it was like an old boys club. Well, it was a white man's world. That's what I'm saying. That's what it, well, I know what it was. So, yeah. so, so we, it wasn't inclusive. There you go. So we came in and we understood that. So it was like, well, we, that was only our only way out. And, 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 and many of us understood that. But also, as you say, in the white man's world, they understood that from us as well, because that's why you got so many black fighters. Yeah. Because for us, that was the way out on the streets. Yeah, yeah. You either were shut in and all of that, or you went into sports, you know, or entertainment, music, stuff like that. And boxing was the boxing. You didn't have to, you could go to a local boxing club. There you go. You didn't have to go and buy golf clubs or tennis Thank rackets. You. you know, you put a pair of shorts on, yeah. a pair of gloves sort of should be oh, there, and that was it. Inexpensive. I, I think, you know, I think that there was that. There were, I mean, I'm, first of all, there, there are a lot of, Really good people in boxing yeah. back then, as well as now, as well as who now. do care about Definitely. trainers, managers, and I like people most do care about. There's Definitely. some who probably just look on it in a different yeah. way, but yeah. that's life. You that's get that it. in all all walks of life, yeah, in music industry, and everything. Yeah. Except for boxing, it's a more dangerous yeah. environment. Um, and I think that you know it has changed, it has evolved over the years. It, it has now. I mean, I see now how many young Asian kids are into the sport. Yeah. Because there weren't a lot of Asian kids around mm. fighting when, certainly when I, well, or when you was fighting. Yeah. You think there's a lot of Asian kids. Yeah, definitely. Lots of them doing it. So, it, you know, it, it, it has changed. And that's the good thing about it is that, you know, it, it is a leveller. Mm. And I don't, th and I think, and you probably know better than I do, when you're in a gym and it's a mixed, 
environment, yeah. you know, mixed ethnic backgrounds, yeah. whatever it is. There's a bit of a camaraderie about yeah. it, isn't there? Yeah. You know, there is a mix. It's not like war, him over there. You, no. It's, it's, yeah. it's a different thing. Yeah. It's You're all supportive yeah. of each other. Thank you. And that's it. And I, th and I think, you know, in some ways, that's, that's where boxing is, is useful. Because how do you get, how would I know from my, my background, mm. someone, I'm talking about an old Jack, from yeah. your back, how do we, we would never connect you. That's you know, right. we didn't go to the same right. places together, yeah. you know, yeah. we didn't do yeah. it. So, it, it, but in, you're in the gym and suddenly you're looking at, some, you're looking at somebody, both sides, differently mm. than how you would have looked. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's why it's really important, really important that, the, the, that youth clubs, all this stuff, mm -hmm. the kids at younger age, yeah. they, should, they should be up. And, and I, you remember we went to the school I told you about, down in mm. Hackney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I it. mean, it's, what they do yeah. there is marvellous. Exactly. I mean, the and they're kids in boxing. All through boxing, because yeah. the kids like boxing, That's youngsters right. like boxing. Yep. They're all being excluded. That's right. Chucked out of school, Chucked never going to get back school. to school. That's it. You know, troubled family backgrounds. Mm. They go to that school, yep. and it's, it, it's, it's firm discipline there, which yep. is great, which I'm, I'm a big believer in. You know, you've got, have certain, you've got to have rules That's right. and boundaries, yep. but there's certain things that, and more importantly, their academic results <clears throat> are above the national average. Yeah. So these kids do have this up here. Of course they, they do. But they don't get the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. So you could replicate that. You could do it, you know, but you could Thank do that you. through music. Yeah. You could do that through, yeah, that's right. you know, other interests that mm -hmm. kids have got who, are mm -hmm. not, who have been basically, you know, excluded and shunned from mm -hmm. society. Because those, you're pushing them away. As they get older, they're a problem. Thank They're you. a big problem. That's there. right. So that, that system doesn't work, of course does it? it doesn't work. And then you what's the next out. thing? I'm out. There you and, go. And, you know, and you're shooting yeah. somebody or, yeah. or whatever else they're doing. Mm. It's, it's, it's really... The only way you can address this, you've got to go right to the heart of it to try and address it. Yeah. And there's going to be some bad kids there. You're never always, going to change. Yeah, always. There's always, always a bad apple, but yeah. you know that, that's how it is. You, you, you know, life is like that. Mm. But there are, you, know, you can change kids' opportunities. Good. You can make a difference. So if we can change that, how can we change the mindset of the people at the top in the white man's world? Well, I think it's a couple of things now. I mean, you know, I think I look at parla Parliament now, it's a little bit more diversified. Yeah. You know, from ethnic backgrounds, it's not just a white parliament now. Yeah. It's quite, a, and, and not just blokes now. Yeah. There's a lot of women. Women. Women in there. Yeah. But I, I think Rightly you've got to so. take, you know, you, and there are, again, it's a bit like, the boxing, you could think I'm using the boxing to board yeah. control, the old Perfect. boxing board yeah. control. We're bad people, don't yeah. I'm not saying they're bad no, people. No, nor am I. I'm just but what talking I'm saying is that they've got a mentality, and I think with MPs, an MP can be there for five years mm -hmm. and then he's lost the, lost the, the yeah. seat and he's That's gone. That's it. But, but if we're not so in the board of control. Exactly. If those MPs in, in inner city areas where yeah. we're getting all this trouble from, if they want to make a difference, then they need to be part of that area. They need to be in there. They need to be mm. speak to people mm. who engage. Engage with it. Mm -hmm. And the unfortunate thing is that's that's just not it, I don't believe that happens. And as we said you know like I said earlier on, I don't think that some young white hooligan or some young black dude or some Asian mm -hmm. hot shot, you know, I don't, they're never going to connect with these guys. Yeah. So you've got to find something They've got to find a way to get yeah. what get their message across through somebody yeah. who comes from that environment. And most of those Bad kids man. look up to Bad boxers, man. footballers. Straight. That's why the boxing academy is so mm -hmm. good, because mm -hmm. they've got boxers who mm -hmm. go to the academy and sit in the classes That's right. with the kids. That's right. But it connects, and, you've, and connection is what it's about. When yeah. there's a disconnect, that's your problem. That's correct. Do, do you think that just the same way as we're talking about the connection between the guys in the gym, and the, the camaraderie that's in there, if, if there were, and that's, there's equality in the gym on that level. Yeah. If we had more people, black people in decision-making areas, don't you think that that would make a huge change in how people feel at the, the other level? I, I do agree with that, but I, but I also feel, irrespective of where, where, what your background is, yeah. it should be down to, to 
being able to do it. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be in that Correct. position because you're white. Correct. And you shouldn't be in that position because you you're black. You should be in that position because you, you know what you you're know doing. What you're doing. doing. And I Good. Think, I think that I think that's very important. So if we know that there are black people that can do it, there's black refs that are good. There's black. There's there's black intelligent people that could be on the board. Of course there are. I mean, but, the, I, but we feel like they're not they're not being put in a position of power because we want to have all the cake. We want to keep that power. I think there's like this power struggle, and there's a shift going on now. You know, they, I'm not really... Well, there is, isn't there, over the last year since yeah, George, really, George Floyd, exactly. there's been a massive big yeah. change of attitude. That's but, correct. But in some ways, I don't, I don't want... I, I feel sometimes looking at it, it's, it's a patronising attitude. Yes. It's like, it's right. a little bit of a piece of, you know, like we're going we're gonna to tick another box. That's it. But they haven't it, changed their it, mindset. To make it look... You know, oh, yeah, yeah, we're very inclusive. But, there you go. You know, but I don't agree with that. Yeah, I, I, as I say, I. it should be, it should be done properly. And right, because yeah. I, I, I think, I think, as I say, that's patronising. I think it's insulting. Yeah. I think it should be, you know, j just say how it is and, and that's be, and be, be, be real, real about it. Be real. Yeah, exactly. and, and, and there are black people out there that can be presenters, that can be doing all the things great, great. that everybody else is doing. They're, they're, but what's happening, they're getting them on board because they don't want to look yeah. as if, yeah. you know what I'm saying, they're racist. And, Absolutely. Don't do that. I know, absolutely. And then you can st sit back and say, where are the Chinese people? Yeah. You know, why aren't they represented? Yeah. Where does this all yeah. go? So you've got, you know, it needs, it needs to be, it needs to be, it needs to be prop, it needs to be dealt with properly. Not, yeah. it's all knee jerk. Yeah. What's the long term plan? Here? That's, that's, that's you know, where do we, how do we, how do we actually in, ensure that going forward, this is going to, this is going to carry on yeah. and it's not going to divide, because I think, Sometimes the way things are done, being done, they're making it even divided. more divisive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than... Yeah. So what do you think about the one knee thing and the whole BLM? Because for me... I, I don't like the BM, yeah, BML the, yeah. po politics. Po the there politics. I don't like the uh, stop capitalism. Yep. I don't like do away with the police. I uh -huh. Listen, where I was, when I was a kid, that, excuse my language here, they used to, the, the, the old thing, all covers are bastards. Yeah. That's what how it was. That's they, used right. to, they used to sing it, the kids well, used to sing it. Well, it ain't changed much, has it? <laughs> but, <laughs> They've got yeah, a lot of work but, to but do to make that but, happen. But, but we've got to get, get yeah. we need police. Yeah, you know, exactly. We need it there. And I think, and I, I told think, this to young people. And I think, and I think um, again, it's become so... Pit, PC, yeah, PC, yes. police constable. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> it's become so PC, you know, how do you deal with this? We're, you know, we got, it's, it's always from one extreme to mm. another. There's never the middle ground to make mm. these things work. Mm. And, you know, and the, and the liaison's got to be better and so forth. Yeah. And, the, and, you know, as I say, with, with the, you know, with, with, with what George Floyd got murdered, I mean, we all see that, it was on air. He got murdered. And, and let's not forget, Frank, this is not the first time we've seen a black man being murdered in cold blood. No, I, I agree with that. And I've also seen, <clears throat> seen it the other way. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it is what it is. You know, you see, I, I, somebody sent me a film from over in the States yeah. of a, it was a couple of black cops with a black guy arresting him and yeah. I mean, he went up. What he was doing is just true. But there are bad coppers mm. and there are good coppers. It's like life, isn't it? There's yeah, some good ones there, there's some bad, yeah. bad well, I ones. I think it's more there. systematic. We're talking about how the system works, though, wouldn't we, Frank? Of course we are. Do you know what I'm saying? But, but it's a system that's been there. Because it's a system you... that lets them off when they do it. That's the problem. Yeah, when it's been done, absolutely. they're getting off, so it shows that they've got the backing of the system why this has been allowed to happen. I agree. And I think, I think with COVID, the fact people were all locked down, yeah. and I think what happened with George Floyd, because that, you know, people weren't going about their daily business. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a lot of people had time on their hands, they're watching these yeah. terrible things happen, yeah. and what happened with him was awful. But let's get it right, he was, he was, a, he was a criminal. Yeah. He's just done something wrong, and, he, yeah. and, and that's it. But what he did was disgusting. Yeah. That's why I mean, we shouldn't talk uh, about we shouldn't talk about what George Floyd done wrong. No, it, we should what, just focus on what this guy done. You cannot because he's got the cannot, law. He is a law keeper. It was the I mean the way he was just like the way he's kneeling on the poor guy's neck, just kneeling there with and no the guy's begging for his life. Yeah, yeah. And what and it's not like he was in any trouble. Now he's been thank you. And up. You've got like four or five men on him. I know, I know. There's, there's yeah, no yeah, yeah, I mean, 
listen, uh, I, I mean, I, I come from a background where, you know, I've, I've seen things with people being fitted up, as we called it back in yeah, those yeah. days, embarrassing. Yeah. But, but you can't just say, you can't just say, the police are all crooked because no, not. no, no. You've got there's a system I, I, there, I, I, and there I are never, good, good people. Yeah. There are good people, and I think now, I don't know. I, 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 it's so it's got to where it's got to. So where does it go now? Mm. And as I say, I think I think you know it, it's these t totally different pendulum swings. Can that yeah. pendulum just stop in the middle now, and yeah. everybody be a bit sensible? Yeah. And you know whatever it is, think it through, and what the long term That's effects it. are going to yeah. be. Because you can't just put a plaster over it. No, no. Why can't we just have fairness across the board? Where's that heart that we have for somebody? Where we want to treat Compassion, them fair. Yeah. There you go. So it's about systematic change, isn't it? Yeah. Whether it's in boxing, you know, it don't matter in politics. Life. You know, the whole mindset has to shift. Everything right? being unfair. I mean, you know, you. you, you I mean. It's, and it's always the, you know, it's the poorest groups that, that suffer. But that goes back when they were From the putting beginning. kids up chimneys. Yeah. yeah. You know, putting kids yeah. down mines, yeah. working, you know, like little kids putting kids in cotton fields. Yeah. The, all that, you know, whatever way you look, the, the yeah. poor as the poor have always there been, been uh, abused go. and used. Yeah. Yeah. But they got yeah. more of it. They got a voice now, but it's how they how you use the voice. Mm -hmm. So uh, just talking about difficulties and struggles. Let's talk about difficulties and struggles with fighters. You know, who was the most probably annoying and difficult fighter that you had to actually deal with? Well, I didn't want to bring this up in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, who's the, who's the, who's the most? Yeah, apart from me. No, who's the most, look, do you know what I find? The, uh, the most annoying thing for me with fighters is the ones who are so talented mm -hmm. who didn't make it. And they didn't make it. Okay. They were talented enough in that, but they didn't work it, make it because they didn't put any work effort into it. Wow. It's not just about having a talent. Mm. It's also about dedication. Mm. And, you know, dedication is ethic, isn't it? It's work. That's correct. And there's been a few of those that, over the years which really disappoint me. You know, they think to yourself, you've got a God-given talent there. Why haven't you used it? How about, have you ever thought about fighters getting people like me in, like life coaches and- Yeah, and, mentors, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mentors in to be able to, because I've, I've recognized that fighters, fighting's a mental thing. And a lot of fighters, you don't want to take away some of that drive, because like Mike Tyson- That's what they are. Was his background was kind of driving him, and yeah. you know, even my background was driving me. Like, I didn't want to be involved in the street stuff anymore and all of that. And yeah. my dad said I weren't going to make it out there and I was homeless at 15. So I had to make it. And that drive was pushing me. But in terms of healing and becoming stronger as a person mentally, we could be we could get support with that in terms of like being a bit have a bit more business acumen. We could we need a bit more support. The opportunity in that. to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think that's a, I think that's that, that's you know, absolutely right. You get, I mean, what, the, close, the, the closest person, the person most closest to you in boxing is your mm. trainer. Yeah. And, and it's then the communication, because mm. normally what happens, fighter gets beat, then the trainer says, oh, yeah, he, he busted his hand before the fight, or, you know, thing, he, you know, something happened at home. Well, why are you telling me after the mm -hmm. fight? Tell me before, yeah. and postpone it. That's correct. What's the point? It's, it's irrelevant. What it you're is. telling me means nothing. That's Tell correct. me before and we can address it. Mm. So there's this sort of, you know, sometimes this disconnect mm. as well. I think from so. there, you know? Yeah. You've seen that. You know, guys go of in course. there and they shouldn't be in there. And we find out afterwards, you're like, oh, pull out, live to fight another yeah, that's day. Right. That's what that, that adage is there yeah, for. It's an excellent one, man. You know? But our pride. <laughs> yeah, things cool. get in the way. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get that. Yeah. I understand that, yeah. but pride comes before fall. Mate. There you go, mate. Love it's like, like a load of proverbs going yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, though. It's so, a what you live by. Yeah, you know, you got these these sayings, but they're real life, man. Of course, that it's all sensible. Yeah, stuff. really good. But, but I've had, yeah, a lot of it, yeah, I've, had, I've I've had some I've had some great times with fighters. I've had yeah. some very frustrating times. I was going to ask you who's the who's the, the one that you enjoyed managing. One of the you know the, some the, of them. The, the fun the, the the fun that I had was the early days of Nez. Okay. Because he was crazy. Yeah. I yeah, mean yeah. you know straight. A lot of people thought he was a Pakistani kid, but he came yeah. from the Yemen, and it was like okay. you know again what, you see how many sort of Asian kids were fighting. That's there were right. very few fighters. Yeah, very few. And he came through, and he was like, but he was. 
he was fun. What was it was that fun. you liked about him? Because he was a cheeky little son. He had his <laughs> cheek. Yeah, right, he had his real self belief. Yeah, he he did. self belief. And he was exciting. Yeah. He could fight. And he was a showman. Yeah. He ticked all, and he got it. You know, all the things I was asking him to do and that, he got it. Mm. And then the family got involved and just ruined the relationship. Ruined the relationship. I mean, he, you know, we, we quite close now, but yeah. Uh, yeah. before that, it, it, it all fell apart. Yeah, I remember actually talking with uh, Naz, he come up to me, who's the real prince? Who's the real prince? I said, shut up, man. That's my real name, brother. You, 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 you he changed that. his name by deed, Paul. You know, he he changed it by deed. <laughs> <laughs> so, he said, the next time I bump into him, I'm going to tell him. Yeah. I'm <laughs> when, when did he do that, man? When did he, he done it at the start. Because he's, yeah, he's Prince Naz. Oh, Nassim, my man. gosh, man. I said so to him, you can at least change your name to King or something. You, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? <laughs> I remember telling him, I said, listen, man, you see you, remember the same people you see on the way up, you're going to see them on the way down. Yeah, bro. And they're going to be looking down. Yeah. There you go. And I've just watched, you know, um, what was it a couple of years ago? I was um, on the phone with Naz um, quite regularly. We were talking and, um, you know, life has changed so much for him, you know, from them heydays when, you know. Well, he went up in prison. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, he, went, he, he got an MBE, they stripped yeah. him over that car accident. But again, he got out of control. Yeah. He, I mean, he, he acknowledges that. He's changed, his, he's changed yeah, himself that. around. And it was a great shame. You know, it was a terrible, ter you know, like you want to see people do well. Because to me, he's one of the well. best there in Britain. Yeah, financially, he's done fact. Yeah, financially, done but, brilliant. But, you know, you want to see him and... Uh, and, mm. I, and, and what was a sad thing was his very last fight, getting booed out of the ring. All those oh. people who cheered him. What was all that about? Wow. Wow. It's, it's, like they, it's like they turned on him, and I, did, I didn't like that. Really? No, yeah. well, I didn't want to say it. it was hard to see. Do you know what? It, it wasn't nice to see. But, but it, some of it was brought on by... Yeah, we've the, got to look that, at But that life. was his advice he was being given. Okay. I thought, I thought again, the disconnect with the fans yeah. was crazy. I mean, yeah. know, but what are you going to do? Here's a really interesting thought, Frank. Do you ever think about being a fighter? Did you ever look and say, oh, I'd, I I'd like never had to the discipline. get in the ring? I'd never had that discipline. I hear you. No, I, I mean, I kept, you know, Johnny Wall, my cousin, he was a... He, he yeah, because you had fighters in the family. Yeah, yeah, fighters. You know, the, old, yeah. the old man uh, fought in the army, my yeah. uncles fought in the army. In, 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 uh, uh, my cousin, <laughs> professional, yeah. Lenny McLean. My yeah, second cousin, right. he fought that's on right. that yeah, unlicensed mm -hmm. circuit. Yeah, yeah I, I never had a, I never. I used to love being out and about. I would have been, I'd have been, I'd have been, if I'd have ever won anything, I'd have blown it all straight away. <laughs> I never had a, I never had a What kind of style of fighter do you think you would have been like if you if you could have been or, or if you was a I, fighter? I, I think I've had the brain to, to you know, bit of boxing, use my jab. Yeah. And... Uh, and yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, stylish. I, yeah, stylish and, and you know, break them up, break them down, and boom, there they go. That's <laughs> pretty <laughs> It's be great to actually see. Listen, let's talk about my career a bit, yeah? yeah. Because when I went with you, I remember game with you, and um, I was excited. Like when we got the news, like what Frank Roll wants to see us at the office. You're young, as you're starting your career, and that's the goal that you set. You want to be on that platform. So for me, it was like, yes, this is the news I've been waiting for. This is the work I've been doing. So how did you, or well, why did you want to sign me? What was that about? Where did you see me? Did you see me fight? Yeah, yeah. See me okay. start. And I, 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 you know, obviously you meet someone, you get, you get a vibe okay. off them. Yeah. So I like that. I like that. Was it? And you could absolutely could fight. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 was, I was quite pleased that you come with us. Nice. Yeah. Is, yeah. You, um, and it was, I mean, they, again, as you say, there was quite an exciting period there. I'm telling you. It was. And you did, you did extremely well. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you got a night, you built a nice record up, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I did. I did. Had some close shaves on the way up. Yeah, but, but that's didn't, experience. But what did you think? Because I didn't have much background. Nine fights, Frank. Like Anthony Yard, eleven fights. Do you know what I'm saying? Nine fights, eight wins, seven knockouts. I, 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 as an I, amateur. I, I look at a lot of guys who go to the Olympics. <clears throat> Then and he's more so now because they get paid, don't they? They're yeah. on the squad system. Yeah. And I look at the kids who don't get it, mm. and I think to myself, you know, you look, you know, like Ricky Hatton, yeah. Kawasaki, Naz, Frank mm. Brunel, 
none of those went to the Olympics. Mm. None of them. Yeah. So for you to come, you know, from, as you say, nine, was it nine fights? Yeah. It? Nine fights. Nine Looking fights. at that, that's, that's a bit of a feat, isn't it? Just having that amount of fights and mm. you're turning pro and you're going to win titles. Yeah. That was, that was something special. And... Did that you know as an amateur that I'd, I'd obviously got to the semi-finals in yeah, just yeah, that short that, period yeah, of time? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, you'd have to have done your homework. Of course. So, that's what, you know, so nine, nine fights, I mean, that is amazing to yeah. do that. And you, did, and you did extremely well. And you was involved in some, <laughs> some good fights, yeah. no doubt about it, very yeah. entertaining fights. I, I don't particularly rate myself like, oh, I'm a great fighter or anything like that. I don't really look at my career like no, that, I thought, I thought, I thought you had a really good career. I did. You know, you, you, you had well title fight. You yeah. See. You know, you got that to was get, down to you, though. Well, it's down to yourself. You've got to get yourself in the position in the ratings to do it. And, of course, yeah. I'll, I'll do my bit. That's what I'm but saying. We got, You've done your we, bit. But we got, got you there, and that was good. What I... And, and so don't go, don't go, you know, doing yourself down there, yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm telling you 100%. You know, you deserve to be there. And all you did, you did it on merit. There was mm. no fight. Listen, there's no favours for someone who has, who's only had nine amateur fights, is yeah. there? It's you. not that you're coming in on a, on a... Everybody knows who you are. You're, you're, you know, you're starting on the bottom rung. Yeah, yeah. You might so not even be on the rung. You've got yeah. to get onto that rung, you know. Yeah. And you did, you did extremely well. What I, what I... The one thing I can tell you now... Yeah. Which I didn't say, when you come back, I didn't want you coming back. You know that. I mean, I made yeah. that very clear. Yeah. I didn't like the idea. I just yeah. did not want. And I know you're a fighter, fighting man. You got to fight. Yeah. I didn't want you back in that ring again. Really? Oh, no, I didn't. So yeah, but I, it was good though. What you said. You said, look, if you are going to come back, and I'm, you know, and no one's going to stop you, then I'd, I'd like to be, you know, be able to help you to move forward. Yeah. And I thought that was awesome because it was like, it was like it was such a natural part of the process to go through what I went through, come back and go back with my manager yeah. and then, you know, go for a, go for well, a I, 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 as I say, you know, I think it's a young man's game. Yeah. As you know. Yeah, and, I hear uh, you. and I'm looking at his stuff now, like Mike Tyson fighting about the Holyfield yeah. and all this. I mean, yeah. it's like sad. Yeah, 50, I, I mean, they're 58 years old, 57 years old. Yeah. That's not... Did you ever see any of my fights when I came back? I'll send yeah, it to you. Yeah, did you, yeah, did you, yeah, you of course. Yeah. You, yeah, you, okay. you sent it to Andy and Andy... Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so yeah. it didn't matter how I looked. You in your head, you just thought, "I don't want Prince back in the no, game." I didn't want it. I didn't want you in there. You know, mm. it's, it's, you know, you've done your, you've done the hard bit. Yeah. You've done everything you had to do, and you, you know, you, 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 you went and fought for a world title. Yeah. You won titles on the way. Yeah. You want, you fought for the world title, and I, did, I really felt that. No, listen, I, I, there are plenty of fighters around. Mm. Me. You know, to, to go to work. I just didn't want you in, in uh, exposing yourself to yeah. any danger. I hear you, man. I hear That's you. the truth, man. What were the, some of the best deals that you done in boxing that you were really proud of? I think um, Kawasaki against Lacey, because he Big was a one. massive underdog in Big that one. fight. Everybody fancied him. Big one. Um, Costa Zoo and uh, Ricky Hatton, because again, Ricky was a massive Big underdog, one. and I yeah. fancied him for my life to win that. Really? Yeah, yeah, when we made that fight. I really fancied him for that. Uh, Pretty good judge of um, I think it's how a, things look, turn out. Know, what's right? the best punch is all about timing. Mm. Um, best matchmaking is, is about timing, if mm. you get it right. Yes, it. Yeah. It's about getting it right. I mean, mm. you don't always get it right, it can go wrong, but, mm. um, you know, yeah, it's been quite a few over the years, mm. and I've been quite playing Danny Williams and... Like Tyson, I love that. Brilliant, one. <laughs> brilliant. I remember uh, Danny Williams. Yeah. Um, when the fight became available, I got him in a position where he could fight Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. And we came to the office, and I said to him, "I'm going to tell you something now. And this is what will happen if you listen to what I'm saying. This mm -hmm. is what's happened." I said, "You will, you will have vintage Mike Tyson for about one and a half, maybe two rounds." And I said, "After that, he'll be gone." I said, so you have got to survive those rounds. You mm. survive him, I said, I'm telling you, you'll beat him. You may even knock him over. Yeah. And that's, the first couple of rounds, he was like... It was know, hell. And he tucked up well, yeah. he looked on him. Yeah. And, he went, and then, he, and then he, knocked, he knocked him over. <laughs> Let's go in deep, Frank, because on our journeys, we go through, like, pathways where it's like this way and that way. And I'm sure one of your greatest tests for you was someone attempting to take your life.
Yeah. Like, we come from old school. Like, bro, you don't be trying to... If I survive that, then it's over, bro. Yeah. That's the streets that we come from. That's the mindset yeah. that we got. So, you know, how did you feel and how did you get over that, bro? It was tough because you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, if, if I looked at my younger self, but I would have been well known as such. Oh, true. You, yeah, done it, and yeah. I'm quite sure that happened. It's the natural reaction to want yeah. revenge, isn't it? That's that's yeah. what's inside you. That's right. What happened um, with it was I knew that un- well, a few things. First of all, is that I built we had London Arena. Yeah, I was chairman of a public company. I mean, quite sophisticated businesses. Yeah, I I was putting together a syndication of banks that were going to bu- were, get, were buying forty nine percent stake. In London in, in Arena, London which would have secured its future, yeah, because because the interest rate back then I think it was about sixteen percent. You know, we were paying two threes over base rates, you're paying eighteen percent, big on your money, yeah. Um, so they were it, financially it was a tough time, and I knew I had to get back out of the hospital. Mm. Um, and at the time, I weren't thinking about who it was. I was thinking getting out and getting things right because really, I, well, because I had a lot of well, I discharged myself from hospital. I lost about three stone and I discharged myself from hospital. I, I'll come out of the hospital. Um, and I, um, I, 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 all I was concerned was making sure that the family was secured because I, obviously with the arena, yeah. I'd give a lot of personal guarantees. Yeah. So if I'd have gone back, at the time I didn't know it was, but once I knew it was, if I'd have gone back and, like we said, gone and yeah. knocked and him over, care of took care of him, yeah. I would have... Then what happened with me? Yeah. My family had all been knackered, okay. and that's and that's it. So that's yeah. what I thought about, and I and I've got to be honest, I had to put it completely out of my mind. Wow! Because if Frank. I dwell on it, wow! It, which it, if I dwell dwell wow. on it, even now, I'm no different than was up when I was a kid. I'd want to do it, but you, I had to do it for the sake of where, mm. you know, I was for my family and for and, and moving forward. You know, the fa- because of the way I was brought up, mm. the. The guy who did it is very lucky. Mm. And he's so stupid, he doesn't even understand mm. that. Because I could have said, it was you. There you go. That would have been all over. There you go. There you and go. these idiots don't, it? this idiot doesn't even understand to this day mm. that because he didn't I go wanted, to prison because of me. I wanted to understand that, ex- that experience for you. You know that it's this guy. I'm never going to say yeah, no. that it was because that's not my style. I hear that's you. That's not my style. Got you. It's even the same when I when I went, when I went, when I had the tear up with um, Mike Tyson in, yeah. in the hotel. I mean, he was on parole, and you know, and, and all the stupid stories that circulated. Mm. I was there. I know what happened. Yeah. All the, you know, he's another one. He was very lucky because he was on parole. They would have whizzed him straight back in the nick. That's what I'm saying. So you could have you could have been if I was that way inclined. That's right. And everybody, you know, and and I've got to say, anybody, yeah, everybody I must mean, have been telling you from to where do we that. are. You know, that's how you are. But yeah. you know, for a, you know, well, what we, think about what we're advocating? We're talking about crime on yeah. you know, knife crime. How yeah. people got to behave yeah. better. Yeah. But I'm not behaving better, am I? I'm just, I I'm you. sticking to the old. So it was almost like that, that was your test. Yeah. So to, it was, to so it was it was. Um, that was it, and uh, at the end of the day, your family must have been mad because if I, my sons, my well, listen, my my family, listen me, I stopped it from happening. Yeah, with, with my uncle, it, I stopped. Trust that. me, I absolutely stopped that from yeah. happening. Yeah, I stopped that from from occurring because mm. it would have it, it, it won, not even an issue. Yeah. What, not even I, I stopped it from happening. I, but, the reason why I was interested because I had the same thing with my my phone ringing. And guys I knew from back in the day saying they'll take care of this. Yeah. Well, you know what it is. And that's yeah. what it is. And let's get it right. Inside you, that's mm. what you want to take care of it. Yeah. I want to take it. That's how yeah. it is. That's yeah. inside you. But I think that mm. you've got to have some you got strength and resolve to think about where you are now, sitting mm. here, you know, <laughs> your wife and that, rather than your wife having to go and visit you in the nick. Yeah. Yeah. Because so that would have gone straight back on you. Uh, exactly. Whatever happened, it would have come back on you. So was you thinking, how do you come back from this? 
Um, was you just thinking about the business that you were in? I'm I was thinking I, about everything. Yeah. And I'd come out, I'd discharge myself, and I went back to work 10 days later. Wow, dude. That's yeah. some different went mindset. Back in, went back to work and got on with it. I was weak. Yeah, man. Because I lost half a lung. Oh, bro. So I got in on, and, uh, and done what I did. But I was lucky. I got, got hit here, and it's only the angle I, I was at that it didn't go out. But my partner, who was a who worked me at the time, who was wow. a barrister, called his name is John Botrus, who <laughs> went to Trinity College, Oxford, like, to, hello, how are you? And talked, like, you know, very <laughs> proper guy. He jumped on him and pulled him, had him on the floor. Mm-hmm. Got hold of him and, and had him on the floor. Wow. So, you know, and I would never expect that from a guy like mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. You know? We've got, we got, we got youths out there doing revenge attacks and killings. Um, but you can understand why. Pretty silly reasons. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, God, like, yeah. seriously. The way you look to it. But, but how many times, who are you looking at? Were you looking like that? Yeah, that, 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 I, I remember that when I was a kid. Yeah, who's that's right. Like, who's going to break first? Who's, you know, all that's that it. crap, you know? But lives but are being lost over that. Of course they are. But you knew that I could have had my life taken. That's, that's pretty hard to, because I'm not talking about the revenge, I'm talking about what's going on inside you, Frank. What happens to that, that anger or bitterness or unforgiveness? It. I had to control it. I haven't forgiven, but I had to control it. I didn't, and, and I control it by just putting it out of my mind. I don't dwell on it. Okay. If I dwell on it, I could, <laughs> I could go and think myself. Mm. So I don't think about it. I, well, all I do is focus on what... I don't look... I, I don't... How can I put it? I don't... The bad stuff that's gone on, if I was to sit and think about bad things happening to me, mm. you think about bad, you know, terrible things happening in your life, mm. you, you, you can't do that. All you can do is just try and move on from that and gain something from it, learn mm. something from it and see how you can help change, stop something like that happening to somebody mm. else or mm. change, change, change how people think. Yeah. And it's, diffi- it's very, very difficult. And I, and I was determined that was not... G- Listen, nobody was going to get the better of me, and they didn't get the better of me, mm. because at the end of the day, I did what I had to do. I come yeah. out, come out of um, the hospital, and you know I've been pretty successful. Very. What I've done since I've had my ups and downs like everybody, but I've been pretty successful. So yeah. didn't got the better, didn't get the better mm. of me. It was, it was a, it was like a momentary lapse of you. in my life. Mm. That's what it was. Financially caused me a few problems, but of course. you know what? Money comes and goes. Yeah. You can get money, make yeah. money, and that's what you got to do. Uh-huh. So you said something really interesting. I'm forgiven, but you know, I'm going to keep going and put it behind me. What does forgiveness look like to you? If you were to. I, I, look, I've had, I've had um, people over the years, people who I've, who I've trusted and liked and have, have done... Um, you know things that I I weren't happy with, mm. and I for, and I I forget you know I'll forget, not, not, I forget not who am I to forgive people you know yeah. if you've done something wrong to me mm. forgive and maybe there's people who think I've yeah. done wrong to them that's right. and that's life that's mm. ha- that's things that happen mm. but um, I, I am a I, I am I can I can carry a grudge but I can also be quite a forgiving person okay yeah I so think, specifically with this Frank I'm getting at this. Could I forgive the person? Yeah. No. What does that look like to you if you did? I just couldn't. I wouldn't. Even, I couldn't even contemplate it. I couldn't contemplate that. So because, not even in your head. No, because I don't can... think the person is a good per is a decent person anyway. I think I think the person was a fraud, is a liar. Hmm. Don't say a liar. You know, just everything about him was yeah. was it was phony. He was a phony person, you know, who, even when I think of it now, you know, who should kiss my backside. <laughs> Just keep it real. Yeah, keep yeah. it real. Sexist ladies here. Yeah. You know, she kiss it because at the end of the day, if it weren't for me, mm. it'd have gone away. And if, it, and if I'd have been that way inclined, yeah. you know, which I'm not, there's two ways inclined. If I'd have been... Being what if I, if I was if I was what I try and teach my kids to be, then it'd have been a no-brainer. Mm. There, it was him. See ya. Goodbye. Mm. That's it. 
And if I'd gone the other way, and you know, if I'd said Luck, for example, it'd be very easy for me to have gone and done whatever, got rid of him. Yeah. But it's, it's no, that's not where I wanted to be. I just didn't nice. want to be that. I didn't want that. I didn't want that. I really, I really, really knew that I just wanted to get out and there move forward. and move forward yeah. and make sure that my family, because again, you know, because of all the personal guarantees I put in, I was in, I was up for nearly 14 million quid's worth mm. of, of guarantees. So I could, if I'd have if no, I'd gone over, no. I've got to worry about the yeah. kids and the yeah. house and the school. Yeah. And yeah. There's no way. That comes yeah. before every, everything. Okay. If, if I weren't known, you can just move around and do things, yeah. can't you? you yeah. Know? yeah. yeah. And obviously right. a lot of people were expecting something to happen. So anyway. Nice. Okay. Nice, Frank. What does the, the future hold for Frank moving forwards? Because you got you're in a great position. We've you got, got a great heavyweight. Yeah. Uh, you got some great fighters. Um, Ed, Sonny Edwards, Anthony Yard. Uh, we've got Liam. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying myself because I'm yeah. enjoying being part of, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a sport that I enjoy and it's, a, it's, a, it's something I enjoy being involved with. Yeah. I love being part of these, the journey that the, you know, these gladiators are on. Mm. I enjoy that and I enjoy... Um, I, my ego is being proven, hopefully being proven right by some of them that they yeah. won't go and do the business. That's right. So I, I do enjoy that. And uh, I got, what I didn't want to happen, I didn't want any of my kids working in the business. I, I really, really did not sort of put them through private education for that. But they, <laughs> unbeknown to me, because I weren't there on Saturday nights when they were home from school because I was at a show or yeah. travelling or whatever. Um, they become totally... Immersed, immersed in, in boxing, and that's what they like. They're worse yeah. than me. They, t they tell you more about it than I can. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so th th they're taking more responsibility in the mm. business. George, George is the CEO. Francis and Henry work there. Nice. Um, and I, I, I am. Yeah, I'm, as long as I've got a bit of breath and desire in me, yeah. I'll do it. But what, what's your whole vibe with um, the whole feeling around the Fury fight, the AJ fight? You know, what are the difficulties? Well, is there a possibility that it might not happen? Yeah. Wow. Because if one of them gets beat, I don't think Tyson will get beat, but I, yeah. think, I think that AJ, um, I think he's quite, I think he's a very beatable fighter now since that yeah. Ruiz fight. Since Ruiz. And he's got caught quite a few, quite a few times in previous fights. Yeah. Wobbled a little bit. Mm. He's got big, you know, he showed a bit of heart, but the Ruiz fight was, a, yeah. you know, for me that was all, I didn't think it was going to be Ruiz, but I, it was for me, it was always going to happen, and I, and I always fancied that Tyson would beat him. Mm. And to be fair, we could say the same thing for Fury, because he's had some scary moments. Yeah. Had to get up from the floor yeah. in fights. We and, got up from the biggest puncher out there. Oh, well, I wasn't even thinking about Wilder. I was yeah. thinking about before he even got there. Yeah, he's had a couple, he's had a couple of moments. So he's been on to, the floor, but he's yeah. got up. Um, but he's matured, and he wasn't a very active fighter. You look at his yeah. record, very sporadic. Yeah. Whereas we got him, you know, when he came with us, we got him move, you know, nice. doing more work. Yeah, that's what he needed, needs. Which he needed. And when the first fight with Wilder, he was, he, he, I mean, he, he, he lost 10 stone in 10 months. Insane. I mean, that's, that's a fact. Wow. You know? Wow. It's like losing, just like, it's like losing Ricky Hatton. Uh, for me, I thought that um, Fury could win that fight, but I just thought, don't do it now. Please, it's too quick. No, I, 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 that was my. Did you? I talked him into it. Yeah. Did you really? I fancied him. I thought because uh, I watched him, he, uh, I thought he could have a couple more fights, but the opportunity was there, and I said to him, "You should take this." And he wanted it. He's not a fighting yeah. man. I yeah, said, he you is. Take this. I said, "I really do think you can beat this guy." It's amazing. I, said, I think you've got to, you know, he boxed the he, socks he, off him. We did. He got robbed, didn't he? He boxed the he socks got, off him. He got him twice off the floor, but he still. I thought he won it, but. Look, they gave it a draw. Yeah. And then the next fight, the oh. first round of that fight was the 13th round of the yes. end of the fight. Thank you. And the one way traffic yeah. just carried on. Destroyed him. Yeah, yeah. He showed up a lot. The same heart that Wilder ended that fight with. I'm talking about Wilder now. The same heart that Wilder ended that fight with, his heart was broken, Frank. Because because Fury broke his broke heart, he came into the first round with that same heart. When he knocked him down in the first fight, in the last round, he went over because they I, I, all you know we're all sitting there. Here, yeah, Shelley Finkel and all his team, and yeah. they were they 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 they, they, they were beaten. Mm. None they knew it. I could hear them. 
and you know, wish we, I'm cheering our man on, and they were like, you know, they, it was all love. When he clipped him, when Wilder clipped, he caught him, caught him, and caught him again going down. Yeah, big shot, and he was flat. Massive. Out. They jumped up and ran to the ring, and I thought it was all over. I just got, I went, I thought it was all over, and oh. it was about this. We got about six or seven. That's it. He just, it was like the old. Was it Terminator when yeah. the old guy got well, it, Yeah. And he got up off the floor, didn't he? That was a moment. And as he got up, because he was, I, was, I watched uh, Deontay, and he was over in the corner, and Deontay's yeah. going, and he's giving it all the, and his jaw just went, it just, just a whole facial expression. And he got up, and if you remember, the referee, the referee came in the dressing room before the fight, and he said, look, if either of you go down, I'm going to give you a chance. I'm going to look in your eyes, I'm going to say, either walk to the left three paces, or to the right, then come out and look in your eyes, and if you're not fit enough to box, I'm gonna stop it. Mm. So Tyson got up, referee did all that, and went on, and by the end of the round was winning the round. After the yeah. fight, I said to Tyson, I thought he was gone, I don't know he done. He went, Frank, he said, I couldn't feel my legs. He said, if I'd have got up, I'd have been falling all over the place, he'd have stopped the fight. So he had the presence of mind, having taken that, those shots, so wait till he had some feeling back in, wow. get up and do the, you know, because he remember what the, what the referee said. Wow. So, you know, you, know, you boxers are, are, are extraordinary mm, people. Characters. yeah. You know? Yeah. That's it's it. amazing. That's it, man. Got my, all got my admir yeah. admiration. Yeah. Well done, Frank. That's awesome. That's a great time I've had with you, man. And yeah, it's always good to just see you. Just sitting man. down, just talking about these things, real life struggles moving forward our journey our experiences and above all what i get from you is that you're a very strong-minded individual bruv you know and that's what everyone's gonna need because you've been through stuff that could take you into depression i've been through stuff yeah. that could mess with my mental health but we continue to push through having the right focus you should never be afraid to ask for help excellent never yeah. If you've got anything wrong in your mind, it's a near, listen, if you break your hand, you go to the hospital and they put a cast on it. Yeah. You've got problems up here, go and get it seen to. There you go. Because it's there no different, it's part of your body. That's beautiful, Frank. Yeah. That's a great example, because that's what we're going to do. We're not going to feel no way to go to the hospital and say, my hand's hurting, it's not working, and it fix you up. That is even it's more amazing. important. I've done it for many years. Yeah, yeah, it's excellent being able to get somewhere where you can open up yeah. and express yourself yeah. and get some support. That's good. Beautiful, my Thank man. Thank you, my friend. Great having you on, bro. Seriously, great, great, great. You heard it right here on the Dr. Prince Show. Legendary Frank Warren, beautiful guest and a great time we had. I hope you had a good time just like I did. I'll see you on the next episode. Take care, guys. <laughs>